So welcome back to another video. I'm Dan, that dating anxiety guy. And today I'm gonna to answer one of your questions. And this one's actually a great question from a guy called Tommy who uh, had dropped me uh, a message on WhatsApp. And he'd actually asked, uh, if I could do a video about finding a decent wing, uh, because he says that it's kind of next to near impossible to do so at the moment. And I sort of asked him a little bit more about it. And he said that, yeah, it seems to be a huge problem in the community right now. Um, and that it's because when any, when someone becomes remotely good, uh, with doing cold approaching or street approaching, um, they always look to become a coach. And so there's very few intermediate gamers uh around uh so it doesn't sound like really anything has has kind of changed with the industry um in the 15 years with me being in it um whenever there were guys that got a taste of that rock star lifestyle you know when you start getting really good results with women uh it's funny i've always kind of heard like guys end up saying like oh you know what i want to give back to society for changing my ways and now I want to be able to help other men or you get the guys who are like you know what I, I, I really like just how easy the lifestyle will be I only have to go out and like say to guys like talk to this woman or talk to that woman and I could end up getting paid thousands of pounds um, I have heard all of the spiel before you know bear in mind I have worked with at least 80 plus dating coaches in my 15 years helping them grow their businesses and yeah it it for, for me I mean, I mean I won't, I won't go into a rant with this but for me, if you're going to become a coach, you've got to do it for the right reasons. Don't just do it because, you know, it's easy pocket money for you to then essentially live like a, a homeless sex addict and just, you know, get paid thousands and then you can just travel the world and just sleep with more women and, and whatnot. And then just by making a couple of videos, um, you're going to end up getting, you know, business that way. You know, if you're going to come into this industry come into it for the right reasons but th that's not what this video is about he's actually asked me about how can I find uh, a good wingman and I've written a couple of notes here on things that will hopefully help you to incorporate a, a bit of a better vetting process uh, with finding a wing but also just I think really setting a better expectation um, uh, when you are meeting men as well because this industry does attract men from all different walks of life and all backgrounds and cultures and whatnot. And you're going to get men who are in it for very, very different reasons. But what has always certainly been a commonality with a lot of men is that usually every man is who has come in, you know, they've struggled with their date in life, they're not happy with it, or they lack any kind of social skills with women that it makes them near impossible to have uh, a date in life that they are happy with you know they don't really want to be settle settling for um for women that you know I, I, i'm not gonna say leftovers because that's not fair uh but just women who just yeah okay are leftovers <laughs> there's no there's not really any other harsh way to um to to say it so we'll we'll, we'll just call a spade a spade here so they don't want to be uh maybe even putting themselves as the leftovers as well they actually want to be able to have some choice uh, and so you, that's why you get all these guys who then flock into the industry. It takes them an X amount of time to get good. You've got guys who are able to dedicate every single day to going out. And then you've got guys who maybe can only do a couple of days a week or one day a week. Or the guys who maybe, you know, they do it for a little bit and then that's it forever. Or they only do like once a month and so on. But the point is, is that there are guys who have very different amounts of time to be able to go out. But a problem that do that does happen when men with men when they are looking for wings and when they are going out is that you are just looking for literally someone to just go and practice with. Which okay, you'd be like, well, that's kind of the point in looking for a wing. It is and it isn't. The best wings that you can have are the ones that you also form a friendship with. And you'll find that when you go out with a friend and you are bantering with each other and you're practicing and going out together, uh, talking to people, 
it's a whole different experience. You'll have your own quirky way of, uh, of practicing and you'll also have your own uh, in-jokes and relationship uh, or friendships. But I'll, I'll, let's, I'll go through just a couple of points that, that I've written here um, to, to help uh, with the vetting. And, and we'll, we'll kind of consider this in two parts. The first part is you want to be looking for guys that you can actually form friendships with. So we'll start with that first rather than giving the next bit. So when you are looking for wings, I mean, there there are maybe different platforms um, that you can do it. There are so many dating communities in the world. So depending on where you base, um, you just literally have to kind of scout them. There's not really any other way to do it. Um, but you could also in just your social circles, if you know other men who are single, um, who, you know, are looking for relationships or maybe who are looking to develop their social skills then those are also the people that you can be saying well look I want to go out and practice my social skills and my cold approach and if even if they're not aware of the community or the dating industries you can at least introduce them to certain ideas but also why not use it uh, as an ability to go out and just hang out together and then you know even if you just walking around for a couple of hours, practicing in certain environments or going to bars together and practicing that way. It doesn't have to always necessarily be on the street. But I think the first thing though that, that most guys need to do if you're not in the circumstance where you're in social circles and things is that, yeah, you need to be going on dating communities and asking guys if they want to um, go out and, and practice first, which is easier said than done. But then what you need to do is you need, excuse me, uh, you need to vet them. You need to actually find out if they are the kind of guy that you want to be spending time with. Because it's a bit weird if you're messaging guys saying like, hey, yeah, you want to go out and practice doing cold approaching or you want to practice going out doing day game. And they're like, yeah, man, yeah, let's do it. And then you go out, you meet up, and you've got nothing in common, you're not really saying anything to each other, and then you're just sort of like walking around with each other, and you're like, yeah, yeah, go and talk to that girl, go to that. It doesn't put you in this sort of like fun frame of mind, or even in a mindset that's gonna be beneficial to your uh, your developmental growth. The best way if you really want to develop your skills is being around people that you enjoy spending time with. So, First things first, and this is going to sound a bit weird, but when you are arranging to meet up with uh, a guy who could potentially be your wing, I can't believe I'm going to say, treat it a little bit like you're both going on a date. Um, meet up for a coffee, go for a walk, or go and like hang out in a bar, or uh, or even go to like the arcades or something, but just do something that allows you both to one, feel comfortable with each other and two, actually get to know each other, which as I say, it sounds like a date and in a way it sort of is. But the point of it is, is that you are doing what most people do when they go out to networking events or socializing events when they are looking to make friends. There's even like speed it's not even a speed dating but there's like speed networking events where you can make friends you can do that there's loads if you have a look on meetup.com or even other like events in London or worldwide uh, sort of platforms you can find plenty of sites or um or locations where you can literally get to make friends and 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 whatnot and you are in circumstances where you get to relax you can chill you can then talk to each other about whatever you want find some commonalities and then you can develop a friendship there i know for me some of the best friends that i've got in the industry funny enough actually were met through uh sam overton so fluid socials coach um and uh, and we've become lifelong friends from that because we found things that we had in common outside of the dating world and that gave us even more reasons to hang out with each other uh, outside of doing street approaching and then when it came to doing street approaching we would have so much fun we would get into flow state even quicker we would relax even more our anxieties would certainly drop a lot more and 
it was even easier to talk to women because we were just in that fun, playful mood. So it may, it does make a difference. But making sure, though, that you are at least going out with guys that you're friends with is really what you want to probably be focusing on uh, in parallel. I'm not going to say first, but in parallel to going out and practicing with guys. So the first part, go out, meet the guys, treat your kind of first time with them as a date. You don't have to have like like an eight hour thing or whatever. Just, you know, have a coffee, go wherever, get to know each other and then decide if that is the kind of guy that you want to go out and practice with. You might go, you know what? Uh, mate, we haven't really got much in common, but you're a cool guy. I like you. Let, let's go out and practice together. It could be that that could be like literally the bare minimum. But even that can make all the difference. And you're not putting the expectation of like your friendship is going to blossom literally in that first go uh, or in that first meet. But you are just at least making sure that you're not going out with a guy who just isn't on the same wavelength as you, because it can be certainly quite off putting uh, if you're going out with someone who is either just acting really creepy, uh, doesn't have the same mentality as you and maybe what you're looking for when you're going out to go and try and date women. Um it, yeah, there, there can be certainly a conflict of interest in that. And also, and I'm going to do another video about the bro code, but you don't also want to be going out with guys who are going to potentially steal the kind of women that you're attracted to. If you're going to go and practice with guys, then you want to be going out with guys that are going to give you support as much as you're going to give them support. And it's amazing how many guys as well I've known in the past who won't necessarily do that. They treat the experience is every man for themselves and they are not people that you're going to get the best learning experience from. So then we got the second part of this, which is then when you're actually going out to practice together. Again, if you've got that friendship there and you've got some similar ideologies and commonalities with things, or at least you just get on with each other that you like each other enough to go out and practice, then the next thing you need to do is actually consider offering that support for each other. Don't get too greedy with trying to, you know, I want to get all the approaches in, you know, it's about my learning time and this and that, because otherwise you might as well just go out and practice solo. There's no point stealing the opportunity from other guys then if you're going to just take it all for yourself. You're like, oh, every hot girl that I see, oh, I'm going to go for them. You've got to alternate. You have to practice with each other, which does really lead on to my next point, which is that, you know, when you're going out with guys, um, don't necessarily look for guys who are on the exact same level as you. So kind of like with what, what Tommy had mentioned about, you know, the... Um, that there aren't really that there aren't many intermediate guys you know as soon as someone gets good they go to become a coach well maybe also consider like that it is absolutely okay to go for um practicing with men who are either better than you or who are worse than you because when you go out with guys who are worse than you then it puts you into this like teaching mode this teaching phase and actually i have found that that can certainly refine your understanding of how attraction works and the whole dating process. And that can actually get you better results when you're able to pass your knowledge and wisdom onto someone else, which maybe ironically, that's where people then decide to become coaches. But yeah, um, but also by accepting that maybe it's okay to go and work at uh, work, maybe it's okay to uh, be going out and practicing with men who are also better than you, it also gives the opportunity of this osmosis to, to happen as well, where certain traits and behaviors off of the guy who's better than you can rub off on you. And that will also dramatically improve your social skills and dating skills as well. And then that can almost fast track you going from a beginner to an intermediate or an intermediate to a pro, whatever that means. And um, it, it, you, you find then that actually these different levels don't really matter that much. That as long as you're going out with someone who you get on with, you know, they, uh, they're happy to learn from you. You're happy to learn from them. 
Um, you're giving them support. They're giving it to you. They're giving you advice and feedback when you need it and vice versa. Then really in a way, it's kind of like a coach helping another coach. And that is really just what going out and practicing together is, you know, Uh, and not to undersell what coaches do, but ultimately when you're going out with a dating coach, I mean, all you're doing is really getting feedback from a professional telling you, you know, what you're doing right, what you can, you're doing wrong and what changes uh, you can make to get improved results. Um, And ideally they should be listening in with a headset into your conversations. If they're not, then don't work with them. I have done a video on this. If you want to check out my, my four parts of, uh, of, of uh, looking for a dating coach to work with. But if you're able to, otherwise then, yeah, you're, you're just literally just going out with a wing and you can be, just be practicing together and you can be listening to each other's interactions if you call each other as well. So at the end of the day, the, the best kind of wingman that you can look for, the ones that you can form a friendship with and actually create a social circle with as well, having just more than someone who you're just going out to like like it's like literally meeting up with a stranger really i mean you don't want to be just walking around with a complete stranger um to go and talk to people um it's it, it does it just makes the scenario weird and that's in a way actually what probably gives the industry a bit of a bad rep but going out with friends look for friendships in the wingmen that you want to go out with and i can assure you even if they are looking at becoming a coach because they'll probably end up reaching out to me to help them with starting a youtube channel for it but if they do decide to be a coach then you've also in a way got a a bit of an assurance that they want to hang out with you they will still go out and practice with you rather than just trying to look to make a bit bit of a, a quick buck from people just so they can fund this lifestyle for themselves Maybe I might actually do a video about the boom and recessions of coaches in this industry because I've seen about four or five generations of coaches who've come in and left and come in and left and and so on and, and mutinies and stuff with with uh, with uh, it, the industries of of or uh, dating businesses and whatnot. Um, but go out and look for friends, and then you know if they do. Well, I mean, then also in fact, what happens if they do end up becoming a coach and you are finding that then you're on your own because I think it's safe to say like a lot of guys as well they don't like going out solo uh and in a way you know if you're going out solo don't do it for a long period of time because if you're doing it for like eight ten hours in a way that that is what makes you weird um or only do it for a limited window of an opportunity if you are going to do that um but what happens though if if that does happen because that is probably also a good question don't put all your eggs in one basket don't just have one wingman that you can go out with have a couple uh in a way this is actually where you know form your own social circle form your own group or form your own little community of guys i'm in a number of uh wingmen groups uh of guys who have branched off from like dating coaches uh community groups and then they form their own little thing and they've got their own friendships and stuff and that is what you want to be um be doing as well because then at least if one guy moves on you aren't stuck you aren't alone you have at least then other men that you can go out and you can be practicing with you've also then got the group of you who want to be sociable you want to go out the cinema go bowling you know play on the playstation together go to bars on a regular basis you've got people who you can constantly be relying on and you haven't just got the reliance on one person because you also have to consider what if it's you who becomes uh, a coach in time. What happens to the friends that you leave behind? Are you going to just leave them behind or are you going to want to stay friends with them? You're still going to want to hang out with them. And again, that is the difference between having friendships with guys that you meet through uh, practicing cold approach than those that you just are going out literally for the sake of it. The ones that, you know what, tomorrow... I don't care about that guy anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm moving on with my life. 
that's that's not a friendship and that also doesn't really teach good life skills or um uh, or manners uh with that either you know it's about building a community that has friendships and also that does encourage men to grow so i think really moral of this before you know I, I, this video does get any longer is that with in regards to the vetting process do what you need to do by joining commu dating communities or going to networking events and stuff. Uh, maybe even in your current social circle, if you know that there are single men that uh, are also looking to improve their dating lives, hang out with each other. Get to know each other a little bit more. Or if you're even at that stage when you are where you are friends, then now you can go out and go out and practice uh, your social skills together. It doesn't matter if one guy is better than the other one, support each other. And in fact, the more support you can give each other, the better results you will get. Uh, and, and men don't really think about that. They think every man, man for himself, I should only focus on my own journey. But you know what? You will get so much more out of the experience when you are helping each other. Uh, and it does actually remind me of when I used to, uh, when I was in my peak of doing the, uh, the the pickup stuff back in, must have been what, like 2014, 2015 maybe. Um, I remember when I was going out with my wings in bars at night, we would sort of recognise with each other sort of like our levels of how good we were and whoever was the weakest at that moment in time in the group we gave them the most support to make sure that they got whatever results during that night because if everyone else can get it easy and one person's got it harder then don't leave that man behind help that one out and then even if they end up going off they end up having a happy ending in the evening then if all of the other guys who know what to do, know how to socialise and stuff, if they can get results, then they've got the new challenge of just now doing it in a smaller window of time of the night as opposed to the other guy. You help each other out. My goodness, you really do get the best friendships and you will certainly find wings that will last you for a very long time. Um, and some of my closest friends who started off as wings who are now in long-term relationships one is now uh his uh his missus is now pregnant which i think is just absolutely amazing uh, i'm going to push to make sure though that he calls the uh well if it's a, if it's the son i'm going to make sure that he calls it daniel that's for sure <laughs> but, and he'll be like like no daniel no um but um but you know, when you end up forming like really long term friendships with people and it's then so easy to be able to call them up and say, look, I, I need I need someone to come out with me. Can you help me out? Like my friend Aaron and I will actually do a, a podcast episode with him in the new year because uh, he said he would. And even Doug actually said as well. But uh, as you'll you'll find out, you can just literally call up and say, right, I need help with this and you will get it. And you'll have a much more long-term commitment of a, of a wingman, which also kind of sounds like a relationship from dating someone as well. But, but there you go. So I, I kind of hope that this video has been useful. Um, uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts about the video in the comments below. And if you can, do please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And if you have more ideas of videos that you would love help with whether it be for uh doing day game night game uh cold approaching in any situation um street approaching obviously and also just other areas of dating relationships sex and stuff as well then also leave comments below and i'd love to hear your requests because then i can actually reach out to uh more experts and certainly plan videos in particular that are going to help you guys and also just show off more my coaching skills to help you get the uh, the best results too so thank you for watching do everything that i've just said and uh look forward to to more videos from that dating anxiety guy <laughs>